What's up? Welcome back. In this episode, we're going to build semantic search so that when you search for something like, I don't know, Python, it'll give you stuff in the results that are similar to or related to the word Python. Right now, it is searching on exact matches for text. So if I say like Airtable, JavaScript implementation, right now it's searching through the content, the title, the body and the transcripts of my videos and not returning anything. So we want to make it so that it's, it matches meaning. Now I did make a video called using Pinecone Vector DB from Rails for OpenAI. This one, I didn't actually make it work. It didn't get there. Uh, there was a lot of missing pieces and a lot of trying to figure out how Pinecone works. And uh, there were some gaps in my knowledge. Thanks to Rabbit Hole Syndrome and James Briggs, Two channels that I highly recommend, go check them out, subscribe. Uh, Rabbit Hole goes deep on lots of different things. It's awesome. James Briggs has some amazing overview videos to give you some basic high-level understandings of how a lot of this ML stuff works. So go check those out. We're gonna also use a tool today called Langchain RB. Langchain, I was like, for a long time, I was like, what the heck is Langchain? You could think of Langchain as a tool set of a bunch of different collection of tools where they have really clear sort of use cases for each of these different tools. And there's lots of third parties that are providing things like large language models for doing embeddings or large language models for doing completions. And then there's also tools for like, how do you split up based on tokens or based on readme docs? And Langchain is just a collection of those different things. So instead of having to go out and get different gems for all your different use cases, Langchain RB should be packaging those up. It is pretty new. For example, if you go to the wiki and preparing data, one of the things we're going to use today is chunkers, which the docs are a work in progress. So to figure out how the chunkers worked, I was just digging around in the source here. And if we look at the chunkers in the lib directory, this is where we're going to find some of those details. For instance, if you look at text, this is a gem that does some text splitting. If you look at the semantic one, this is actually going to go out to use a large language model in this case they recommend using Anthropic, whatever. We're going to get into that. We're also going to use a tool called Neighbor from Andrew Kane. Andrew Kane has been putting out some amazing stuff. We've been using tons of his tools lately, Group Date, Blazor, Ahoy. Go check out Andrew's stuff and thank you, Andrew, for all your hard work. Neighbor is a tool for finding like nearest neighbors. So we're going to use that. Now there are, here's the different steps we're going to do today. We want to first break our content into chunks. Then we're going to generate and store those embeddings for each of those chunks. Now, when we're storing the chunks, I'm not only going to store the embedding and reference back to the original object, but I also want to store the text that was used to generate that chunk for a future use case. We're not going to use that today, but we want to use that later for retrieval augmented generation so that we can build a little chatbot. But for search and for semantic search, you really just need the embedding and then some metadata or reference back to the original object or to like the URL where you can find the result. And we're going to do the generate and store those embeddings. And then we're also going to add some tools for looking up those chunks. We're going to use this nearest neighbor to figure that out. Okay, let's jump into it. So we're going to say bundle, bundle, add matrix, langchain RB, and neighbor. And this should add those three gems for us. The langchain RB underneath the chunker the one we're going to use today is called recursive text so langchain chunker recursive text and our first step today is actually going to be to break up the content into those different things so if we open up the rails console we can explore with this oh okay so i am on like the bleeding edge of rails so i've got 7.2 alpha installed and i'm having issues with this polyamorous blah 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 this is actually because I have Ransack in here and Ransack is not play nicely with Rails 7.2 yet. I'm sure it will eventually, but conveniently we're working on changing search. We don't actually need that anymore. All right, let's open up Rails console and we want to do langchain chunker recursive text dot new. And we're going to pass in, this is some text. And then maybe we break on new line. This is another paragraph just to show you how this works. We might say chunk size is I don't know, 25 and then we can have a chunk overlap. This example is not going to have any good detail for that. And then separators is going to be an array of what you want to split on. So if we do double new line here, that gives us back this chunker object. And now we can say dot chunks and that will split up 
our original text into two different chunks. I guess 25 isn't long enough because it ended up splitting, this is another paragraph, into RAF. And this might, or this must be a token, right? So this is some text. This is another paragraph. Cool. Also notice that the chunks that we get back is an array of these dictionaries where we have the, the text and we have a cursor. I don't actually know what we use the cursor for. We're just going to use the text today. And the idea is that we're going to create a model in the database and we're going to store the, each of these different chunks from the original source. So if we look at like article.first.body, we have in this case a markdown, a markdown article about Airtable. Airtable is a popular tool for building no code applications, blah, blah, blah. This is something that I wrote. And it, this is usually too long to build embeddings for. Most articles that I have are going to be bigger than the number of the number of tokens that are accepted as input into the current models today. And so what I'm going to do is break these up into chunks that make sense and that are of a decent size so that we can take those snippets of text and get embeddings for it. The embedding, there's lots of videos that'll explain like what embeddings are much better than I can, but it's just a point in a, an n-dimensional space. The dimension is defined by the model that we're using in this case, 1,536, because we're gonna use ADA 002. And that will give us back this like giant array of numbers. So let's do this sort of chunking part first. So in the neighbor thing, we want to say Rails G migrate or Rails G neighbor colon vector. And this is going to create a migration for us called install neighbor vector. And this just says enable the extension vector. That's to enable the PG vector thing, I think. So now we can say Rails DB migrate. There's a bunch here that's for like Rails 7.2. This is the last one. This is what actually ran was enabling that vector. Now what we can do is we can say Rails G model chunk, and each chunk is going to have a reference back to the article. And in the case of this application, we're going to have articles, podcast episodes, and videos are all going to have some sort of content that I want to chunk up and then make searchable. And so in this case, I'm going to call it chunkable as a uh, polymorphic uh, association back to the content type that I want to like actually chunk up. And then we'll have the content. This is the chunk content. So just that small snippet. And then we're going to have some embeddings. Uh, and this is going to be a vector. Okay. So if we open up this create chunks migration, we want the limit of our, our embedding vector to match the size of our model. So if we look at the text embedding ADA002 model, the output dimension here is 1,536. You might use a different model, but that's the one that we're using today. There's uh, a great video by in, in the rabbit hole, on the rabbit hole page about picking which models to use and why, but we're just gonna use this ADA002 one today. Okay, Rails DB migrate. Okay, an article is going to have many chunks, has many chunks as uh, chunkable. And okay, so now let's make a concern called chunkable. And our chunkable concern is going to help us like organize our logic for chunking things up in a way that we can reuse it across a couple of these different models. So we'll make a chunk method that will go through some text content and then break it up into chunks. Okay, so the, the, the text content is gonna be different. If we have like an article, then the content is gonna be, we wanna use the body. But if we have a podcast episode, then the content we want to use is going to be like the transcripts or something. And I think I have, yeah, formatted transcripts. There's a couple different things we're going to want to run over or split over. In each of these chunkable methods, I'm going to say two, maybe chunkable S. That'll be like the chunkable string. And here we'll just say body in the case of article. And here we can make this chunkable S as the first argument. And then we have chunk size, 1536, 
and we have chunk overlap and we'll make it 200. And I think that's gonna get us pretty close, right? Ah, separators. So the separators are actually gonna be a little bit different depending on the type. Oh gosh, how do we wanna do this? Yeah, I guess this is another thing we can put in here. Chunkable separators. And for articles, I wanna split on like a new line followed by a pound sign or a new line followed by two pound signs or three pound signs because it's markdown. This is gonna be like an H1, H2, H3. And that should give us a pretty good, pretty good breakdown. And so we'll have to, we'll have to implement chunkable S and chunkable separators in all of our methods that are chunkable. So we're going to say include chunkable. And for now, we'll just P chunk. Okay. We'll just print it out. So if I say rails console and we say article dot first dot chunk, we should get back a bunch of chunks and we do. These are all the different chunks that we're gonna use. We've got Airtable is a popular tool for building, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and the, the content of each of these is in chunk text. Okay, this is, I guess we've got the first step done, right? We break it, we've broken it into chunks. The next step is we wanna generate and store those embeddings for each chunk. So now what we wanna do is we wanna get the embeddings and this is going to be available through by, in this case, we'll hit open AI. So we'll say open AI is going to be a Langchain LM AI.new. And we already have this set up in rails.application.credentials.openai key. Okay. So if you go to open AI, you can get your API key from the dashboard. We're moving pretty quickly. The whole idea here is just to show like how to set up some of these pieces in Ruby. There's lots of documentation and videos out there about how to get started and get set up. So the method on Langchain is called embed and you pass it some text and embedding is going to give us back this giant array of array or this giant array of 1,536 numbers that represent this specific body of text. And as a result, we want to create a chunk and the chunk is going to have the content and it's also going to have the embedding. Okay. Now we also, when we run this, we also want to like delete all the existing chunks before we go and create a bunch of new chunks. And then maybe at the bottom we'll say puts, I don't know, chunks.count chunks created. Sure self.class.name. I don't know. That's fine. ID. Okay. So if we reload this and say article.first.chunk now, okay. So now we're going out to open AI and hitting the API a bunch of times to generate embeddings. We generated 12 chunks for one or for article one. And now if we say chunk, chunk dot last, now we have this giant, um, thing embedding and right now it looks like a string right and it's actually like this giant array and then we also have the content and this was the content that was stuffed in there we also have our polymorphic fields here for relating back to article with id1 and if we call chunk.first.embedding then right now we still get it back as a string so if we go to ch if we go back to the chunk model one thing that's available from this neighbors method is has neighbors. And then you tell it which column you use for, for neighbors. And now we can grab that embedding and we get back an array. What's cool about this is that it's a little easier to work with the array. I don't know. It's a little easier to work with the array than the embedding thing, but there's also some really cool methods inside of here that let you find the nearest neighbors given some other embedding. So if we were to use, let's see. So if we were to use Langchain, LLM, openai.new with our API key. And now we say openai.embed and we pass in some text and this is going to be our query. I don't know, webhook, like webhooks are fun or something. And we're going to get back some embedding query or like query embedding is going to be some other giant 
list of numbers. What we can do now is we can compare our query embedding and our chunk embedding to figure out how similar they are. What we want to do is use the matrix gem to convert this into a vector. So we can say vector is going to take in the query embedding. And then we want to say inner product of a vector of the chunk dot first dot embedding. And this tells us 0 0.74. It's, I don't know, it's close, somewhat close. If we change our query to something else, hot dogs taste yummy or something, right? And then compare these, it should be further from 74, I would guess. 66. Okay, so hot dogs are hot dogs taste yummy is less relevant to an article about Airtable than webhooks are fun. Webhooks are fun gives us 74 and dog hot dogs are yummy or taste yummy gives us 66. Now, if we say if we make another query here that's how to set up Airtable and we now compare, now we're getting 0.8. So the closer we get to 1, the more similar the vectors are. And we can use this similarity. In this case, it's just like dot product similarity, but we can use this similarity to find other chunks that are similar. Okay. What's cool about this is that we can use the built in nearest neighbors tooling to automatically find those results for us. All right. So now we've got our generate and store embeddings for each chunk. The next step is we want to look up chunks by a query and ultimately find that source content. So what we want to do now is go back to our, yeah. So we want to figure out how to search all of these different things. So maybe we make a method called search and this should be like a class method, which I can't, I think for, for concern, uh, I don't know. We'll see. Search is going to take in a query and it will first generate embeddings for that query. And the content is going to be the query. And then what we want to do is find the nearest neighbors for that query. And over here, if we look at this nearest neighbors method, it takes in, I guess this is probably the column name first. I'm not actually sure. And then it's going to take in the embedding. And then it takes in the distance. And I've found that using cosine similarity for distance is good. And then what else do we want? And then we're going to just grab the first 10. And then we'll map chunkable.unique. Okay. And that should give us something decent, I believe. So what we're doing now is we're finding the chunks that are most similar semantically to the query that we're passing in based on the cosine similarity between the OpenAI embedding of the query and the OpenAI embedding of each of those chunks to find the first 10 chunks that are most like the query we passed in. And then we're mapping over those chunks to pull out the chunkable. So this is going to be the article or video or whatever. And then we're saying, make that unique. We could probably make this more maybe like the first 20 or something. And then once we get unique, grab fewer, I don't know, like by saying the first 10 chunks, as soon as we map it to chunkable and then make it unique, like it's possible that 10 chunks are all about the same article or 10 chunks are all about the same video or whatever. This isn't going to do anything with an API. So we can make this bigger and then say dot first 10 or something. And now if we reload and we say article dot search for Airtable. Okay. So this, oh, we need to, no. Okay. This method needs to be moved into something else. How does that work? Ah, okay. So I think this is supposed to extend and then class methods do, and then we got to move this thing up there. Okay. And this probably Excel, reload. Okay, now we also need, okay. There's a way to make this work in both places, but we're just gonna rush. 
and it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. Okay, find me the article about Airtable. Boom, all right. And then we got back the article. Look at that. So now we are semantically searching based on some string. The next step is to just wire that up to the UI, which is relatively straightforward. So we can go to the videos index. And right now there is this giant like search thing on the video page. The article index doesn't actually have one yet. So let's add that. And our search name is just gonna be Q now. So if we look at localhost 3000, nope, our server isn't started. Okay, start up the server. Okay, now we'll go to articles. If we say Airtable JavaScript thing and search. Oh, okay, we've got another issue here. This should just be params Q. Airtable, oh, wait, we also need to wire it up through the controller too. Articles, controller, we'll just say if params Q dot present, articles is gonna be article dot search and then we'll just return early, okay. Airtable JavaScript stuff. Well, okay, pagey is gonna be nil. So article index, if pagey.present. We're moving quick. We're hacking stuff together. Okay. Airtable webhooks, what does that give us? Oh my gosh. Okay, so Airtable webhooks, like the, this content, Airtable webhooks is not mentioned anywhere in here. We search for Airtable webhooks, that content does not exist but it was able to figure it out semantically. That's, oh, that's so cool. I love this, this is amazing. Now I just gotta do it on all the other ones. But yes, we have it working. It's using OpenAI. Every time someone searches, we should cache the results. And if we see the same search term again, we should just return those same results so that we don't get charged too much money. But semantic search up and running with OpenAI. And PG Vector, we're using Postgres. We're using our own Postgres database. We don't have to use uh, another third-party vector DB. So that is sick. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I don't ask often, but if you're down, I would really appreciate a subscribe. And if you think someone else would like this video, let them know. Uh, also, if you yeah, if you want to follow along, I plan on trying to build a little chat bot where you can talk to the videos and articles and podcasts. So we'll do that in a future episode with uh, retrieval augmented generation. So we'll reuse those same chunks to figure out how to embed some context in a prompt. It's going to be fun. Thanks for watching.